been very good to our family this year. He's blessed us. You know, I can't think of a single bill that came our way that didn't get paid. And he's just done so many good things. He, you know, he made a way where we didn't have to work out of town anymore. And he, he let us be home with our family. And he, Amen. And he blessed me with a good job this year. And I'm just so thankful for all that he's done. And I'm sure we can all say the same, that God has been good to each and every one of us. And he's worthy of a praise this morning. Amen. He's worthy to be lifted up. <coughs> Lord, we just thank you so much for this day. We thank you for giving us another opportunity, Lord, to gather together in your name to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, to give honor where honor is due today, God, and to lift up your holy name and give thanks unto you, for you are great and greatly to be praised, Lord. And we just thank you for all that you've done for each and every one of us. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word that you've already given us this morning, Lord. And we thank you for every good and perfect gift, Lord, that came our way because we know that your word tells us that it can only come from you. And we just thank you for it. And we came here today to lift up our hands to you, to lift up our voices to you because you are worthy of the praise this morning. In Jesus' name.
Shakti Hallelujah. 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 We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We need to remember Sister Ruth Cooper, Sister uh, Mary Bivens, and Sister Ruby Krennic. Amen. Also need to remember Sister Jean Daniels. Yes. And these elders.
request for, to pray for Brother Jeremiah's request. But I want to pray for him right now. And, and there's there's been many that uh, we haven't seen in a while, maybe haven't heard from in a while. Amen. We want the Lord to touch him today. And let's pray again, Lord Jesus. God, we pray, God, for Brother Brandon. We pray, God, for Dwayne, for Philip. God, all these, Lord, and others, that God, that have been struggling. God, we ask for you to move the Lord in their life. Jesus, I pray, God, for you to bring them back. And Lord Jesus, bring them back into relationship with you. Oh, God, hallelujah. Lord, we ask, Lord, for you to move and work in their lives. And touch them, Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. The Lord, I believe the Lord hears and answers our prayers. Amen. You can be seated today. We'd like to say it's so amazing to see Sister Nina today. Amen. Amen. We're so happy to see you. Amen. It's good to see everybody here this morning. Amen. Amen. These, uh, I know a lot of a lot of you stayed up past midnight to see the new year in. Most of the time, uh, most of the time I'm not I'm not up past ten o'clock on New Year's Eve. I just sleep, wake up the next day. But uh, yeah, last night I was. You know what I realized going from going from 2022 to 2023. You know what I realized. Let me tell you what was different. You know. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I, I was laying there in bed and 2022 passed, 2023 came, and I went to sleep. <laughs> Amen. But you know what? God, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. He's the same last year as he is going to be this year. And I believe this year God is going to do greater things than we have ever seen before. Amen. I've I've been praying. Uh, I've been praying. I feel like the Lord kind of laid a a direction in my spirit for this church in 2023, and uh, two words: intentional growth. Intentional growth. And the image that came to me was standing with my father out there gardening. And that, just put everybody in here reaps the benefits of his intentional work to make that okra, make that corn, make those jalapenos, make those tomatoes. You know, all that stuff doesn't come about just by happenstance. They don't come to fruition just because he threw a seed in the ground and didn't touch it anymore. He's out there every day working in his garden, pulling weeds, watering them. He's making intentional, focused efforts for there to be growth in his garden. And I'm telling you, that's what the Lord is wanting to do in this church. He wants us to focus, focus on growth, not just in number. I believe he does want more people to be filling these seats. But us growing spiritually, you, this needs to be a year of growth for you. Amen. Amen. If you've been stuck in a rut for years, this needs to be the year that you get out of that rut. Amen. And you Amen. move forward. Yeah. And you grow in God. But it's going to take intentional effort for you to grow. Yeah. And some of that intentional effort we're going to do as a church. Amen. Um, we want to spend, and I'm not saying... Everybody fast in the entire month of January, but I want I want uh, January to be a month that we as a church focus on fasting. And if you'll if you'll commit to if you can fast a day, take a day every week and fast. Uh, or if, if if you've got health issues and you can't fast an entire day, do what you can do. Fast a meal. Fast sugar. Or fast, whatever. <clears throat> God will honor your fast, but um, try to. I'm asking everybody to try to at least once a week to fast. We want this to be. If you can do more, do more. 
Um, I mean, it's only going to benefit you. It's only going to help you. And this is part of that intentional growth. And sometimes when you're gardening, my dad would have to prune away things. And, it, and you might think, oh, that's hurting the plant. It might make that plant uncomfortable, but the purpose of that is for it to grow. And let me tell you, fasting is one of my least favorite things to do. <laughs> As you can tell, I like a good hearty meal. And uh, fasting is, I'll be honest, it goes against my flesh. I, it makes me feel sick. I feel miserable. It just, I get a headache sometimes. It just, my word, if I had any reason not to fast, I've got a lot of them. But I've got one reason. I've got one reason to fast. And that is by me submitting my flesh to the Lord, God is going to bless me and I'm going to grow. And so, if you'll, as a church, I'm not going to tell you what day to fast. I'm not going to, I'm, and I'm not going to watch over you. This is between you and God. You do what you can do, but if you'll commit to purpose in your heart to once a week, at least once a week, spend a day, fast a meal, do something to die out to your flesh. Another thing that, that as a church that we're starting from this time forward, and Sister Emily corrected me. Uh, I think Sister Danielle caught it to me. She she was uh, on the little calendar that I sent. Uh, I forgot to put first prayer on the calendar, which I'm going to update that and add that so that you'll have it on the calendar. But uh, the first Saturday of every month at 7 p.m., first Saturday of every month at 7 p.m., we're going to gather here at the sanctuary and we're going to pray. Pray for an hour. If you want to pray longer, you can pray longer. But we're going to shoot for an hour uh, from seven to eight you have focused prayer just the body of Christ come together and pray um, we're, we still have all night prayer at the end of the month with Brother, Brother Dean and oversees that and uh, you need to, if you haven't been getting involved with that you need to get involved with it, that's powerful um, if you want to come up here and pray on that all, all night prayer you can come up here and pray or if you want to pray at your house, pick a time that you want to pray and just let Brother Demon know. And, because we want to have from 9 to 6 coming. And so people getting up to all throughout the night praying. And uh, so we want intentional growth. Intentional growth. So uh, we're going to want to spend. And you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I know I said that I want January to be a month of fasting. But really, really. You need to, every week, you need to fast. It doesn't need to just be January. We're going to start in January, but I'm praying that the Lord do something in you, do something in your spirit, and, and you, you make that a commitment every week. I'm going to die out to my flesh. I want to get closer to the Lord. I want to get stronger. I'm going to actively do things to get myself, so prepare myself so that I can grow. Amen? And you're not going to grow if you're filled with the world. The third thing that, that we're going to do as a church, and I encourage everybody, I believe Sister Emily has them out in the foyer. Um, uh, she ordered all those bread uh, Bible reading charts. Now, if you've got your own plan, you do your own plan. But we, uh, I, would, I would like for everybody to grab one of those. And if you don't have a plan, use that plan. That's a pretty good one. And let's try to read your Bible through a year. That's yeah. that's what helps you to stay. You just mark off every day. You read so, so many chapters every day. And if you if you don't currently have a plan, use that. Let that be a tool that you use. But intentional growth, prayer, reading, uh, reading the Word of God, and fasting are three ways that we as a church can act to intentionally put ourselves in a position for God to help us to grow. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, I, I, I want, I told Sister Emily, I said, I, I want 2023 to be different. I mean, 2022, there was nothing like seriously bad that happened in 2022, but I want us to grow. I, this is something, and I want to grow in number. And I want I want to see each and every one of you growing spiritually. Yeah. 
I want, I want y'all to develop such a powerful walk with the Lord. That Brother Arthur, you lay hands on someone next to you and they receive the Holy Ghost. You know that Brother Selena said, someone in front of you is is praying and you, and you just put your hands on them and they receive what they need from the Lord. What, what happened? Why does that happen? Whenever you're in tune with the Spirit, when you're moving with the Spirit, when you're growing and you're moving in the Spirit, Amen. And that's what the you know it's not just me, my dad, and Jeremiah and Brother Demon that are called to minister in the church, but you are called to minister Amen. in the church. We are the body of Christ, and we help one another. Yes. And we need one another. And so, if you'll join with me this year, uh, I want to want to do that uh, prayer and fasting and reading the Word of God. And uh, and we've got a lot of a lot of things that we're going to be doing. And so, uh, Amen. Sister Emily has some announcements, some more announcements. Everybody say, Lord bless Sister Emily. Marvelous. Marvelous. I always have something to say. Um, by way of announcements, uh, this Friday, January is going to be busy, folks. This Friday, January 6th, um, the young people are having a youth service here at, is it 6 or 7? I have 7. Okay, 6.30 prayer, 7 p.m. for service. So mark that on your calendar. Then this Saturday, the 7th, this first prayer at 7 p.m., 7 to 8. Um, Saturday, January 14th is going to be a church work day from 8 a.m. till noon. Then Saturday, January 21st, we are having our first ladies meeting at 2 p.m. Royal Rangers will be from 2 to 6, and Men's Fellowship will be starting at 6 p.m that day. So Saturday, January foot, January 21st is full. <laughs> Everybody in here is going to be doing something just about. <laughs> all right. And then Friday, January 27th is all night prayer. And also on the 27th, we have a save our children's rally in uh, China Springs. Um, so we're planning on taking our kiddos to that. And then Sunday, January 29th is a fifth Sunday. Um, my thoughts were that it was going to be cold for January, um, but right now it's proven different. Um, if the weather is cooler by the end of the month, my plan was to do a soup Sunday. Um, if it's warm, <laughs> we might do soups and maybe some other things. <laughs> um, hopefully it'll cool back down. I was, I was enjoying the cool weather. But um, so fifth Sunday, so there will be no Sunday school. We will start at 11 um, with a meal to follow. And also for um, our voting members, we will be having an annual business meeting that Sunday to follow the meal. So please mark that on your calendar. Do not forget. Thank you. Let's worship the Lord. Yeah. 
the presence of the Lord through song of service. And I would encourage you to just be sensitive to Him. Let Him bless you today. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the provisions of life. Thank you for giving to us. Lord, taking care of our families. But, Lord, we want to uh, return a portion of that that you've given unto us, keeping you first in every of our lives, including, Lord, giving. And, Lord, we ask you to bless this morning this offering to the furnace of your God and bless your people as they give cheerfully in, unto you, Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. These young men are going to serve you. I'm so glad to see Sister Nala this morning. Amen. Oh. Sister Nala, how much longer do you have? Um, I'm expecting to be ready tomorrow. Mark? Mark. Mark. All right. You ladies, y'all can uh, feel for her especially. Y'all know what that's like, carrying a child and... and uh, so keep her in your prayers, amen? Yeah. I've been praying for her. Lord bless her with a, a good, safe, uh, healthy baby and keep her healthy and, amen. and hopefully speedily, you know? Yeah. Let it come quick. Yes. Amen. Yeah. They're all different. Oh, yes. I'm telling you, I've got eight kids. I don't think any of them were, you know, the same. But... Mm -hmm. I have but seen Jesus said. move in, you know, because of prayer. Amen. And Amen. When the, even when the doctors were saying it's going to be long, I've seen him step in and uh, change that. He, he changed Amen. that immediately. Amen. They, Amen. they were missed their, uh, what they thought was going to happen, you know, because yes. Jesus stepped in. He can do that. Amen. Amen. Makes and a difference. So, uh, and he's so very good to us. Yes. yes. He's so very good. Well, I I uh, told you the other day I was wanting to, Lord willing, uh, we were going to take, receive communion this morning. And I uh, kind of swapped places with Brother John. I kind of enjoy him teaching me on Sunday morning Sunday. Exactly. You know, I like to have that time of getting the Word of God fed to my own soul. You know? exactly. And uh, praise God. But we... Uh, we wanted to do that because I wanted to uh, talk some about communion, and I like people to understand what they're doing uh, whenever they get partake in communion. We uh, had planned on doing foot washing this past Wednesday, but because of uh, several people being out, it seemed like the bug hit, and uh, either people, grown-ups, our kids, or for one reason or another, were not going to be there. We had a, uh, more men probably than babies, and I didn't want to see Emily be washing her own feet. And <laughs> <laughs> there was other ladies here, but anyway, for one thing or another, uh, we decided to postpone it to this next Wednesday. I think John is still on board with that. Is that right, Sister Emily? Next week, this coming Wednesday, Lord willing, <clears throat> we want to have foot washing. But I thought about it. Uh, went ahead and thought about it uh, this past Wednesday, and I hope that if you did not uh, listen to that, if you weren't here, I would encourage you, not because I said it, but because we've covered the scriptures yeah. on the importance of it. <clears throat> uh, we want you to get the spirit of it, what it's about and not just go through a form, or maybe some people may not even like to partake in it, or participate in it, rather. And I think it's very important for a person as a Christian to, to uh, understand it and to do, uh, to, to be a part of that. Amen. To washing and communion. Amen. Jesus did both of those things uh, at the same time. Whenever he, right before he was going to the cross. He took care of that, and uh, I was kind of, uh, you know, I thought it was kind of, uh, you know, something that I think the next day, I don't know if y'all realized it, but I was looking at Facebook, Brother Bernard's stuff comes on my Facebook, and, and he covered foot washing, and I thought, wow, that was, 
that was pretty convenient, you know. And so I, I, I put it back on the website so that the church could once again hear it and maybe a little confirmation there, you know. He basically covered the same stuff that I did, but I just thought it was uh, very a very good thing to help kind of emphasize. And the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And uh, so be a part of that. You, you do have to humble yourself. It is. It's a humbling thing. It's a humbling thing to let somebody wash your feet. Right. You know, this goes both ways. So, but it's something that Jesus taught. And he had a reason behind it. And we covered that Wednesday. But today, the reason why I wanted to do that Wednesday is to kind of help prepare our hearts for today. You know, because I think it's very important to have our spirits right. And I hope everybody here is today. And you should have after hearing Brother John preach this morning and have this time of worship with the presence of the Lord. And I hope you draw near to him. But we're going to turn in our Bibles. I'm going to uh, cover a little bit of this before we actually do the communion. Uh, you can look in different ones of the gospel, but I chose to look at Luke. Uh, Luke chapter 22, verses 14 through 20. Praise God. Verses 14 through 20. Luke 22. <clears throat> and when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them with desire, I have desire to eat this Passover. Everybody say Passover. That's what they're partaking of. I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof. Eat of what? The Passover. Right? That's what he just got through covering in verse 15. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled. And don't you remember that? until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. In other words, the Passover is fixing to be fulfilled. That's what he's saying. Amen? Remember what Jesus said, I didn't come to destroy the law of the prophets, I come to be fulfilled? Amen. The law and the prophets were a shadow of good things to come, and now Jesus is coming with the reality. Amen? Anyway, he says, and he took the cup and gave thanks and said, and said, take this, talking about the cup, the fruit of the vine, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. And he took the bread, so he's taking the bread, and gave thanks. And what did he do with the bread? He broke it. Why did he break it? Amen. Because it represents his body. Amen. And his body was broken. So he took the bread, and by the way, this is unleavened bread. Leaven represents sin. And he took the bread, and this bread's representing his body, and he was sinless, so the bread's got to be without leaven. And gave unto them, saying, This is my body. In other words, this represents my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. So he gives you a reason why you should do it, right? Amen. To remember his broken body and his shed blood, right? Amen. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying this cup is the new testament or the new covenant. The old, Moses and the law was the old covenant. But this is the new covenant testament or covenant in my blood which is shed for you. Praise God. Lord, help us now as we study your word for a few moments and partake of communion. Bless your people. Help us have good understanding. And I ask for grace to minister this morning in Jesus' name. God bless you. You can be seated. Amen. Jesus is fixing to fulfill the Passover. Amen. Now he didn't mention uh, the word communion here, but it's later uh, spoken, called this, the breaking of the bread and the uh, partaking of the fruit of the vine. 
uh, it's mentioned as communion over in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16. It's referenced that. And I want you to understand what the word communion means, okay? Because this is what we're doing whenever we uh, partake of the broken bread and the fruit of the vine as we're remembering Jesus' death and his affliction that he went through on the cross. Amen? Being broken. And we'll read that scripture in just a minute, but I'll, the definition, the great definition that is given here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 16, let me just go ahead and read it. It says, the cup of blessing, talking about the that which Jesus passed around to his disciples, and we do it now. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion, <coughs> the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break. We also, whenever we take partake of communion, we're going to break the bread, aren't we? I tell you, whenever you take that cracker, that unleavened cracker, I tell you, break it. That's why I tell you to break it, because it, amen. Jesus' body was broken for us, okay? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? In other words, that's what it represents. We do it in remembrance, but what it represents is communion, okay? And the first definition that Strong's gives for this it, it says partnership. So partnership, you think about partnership. You know, if I am a if I am an employer, you know, and I have a bunch of, of people that work for me, that's not a partnership necessarily. Okay? But if I went in with somebody, equal parts, right? Yeah. And uh we both, I know I used to work laying floors for Best, Best Way Carpet, and, and there were two men that were partners with that business. And both of them, you know, they had a say. Because a partnership brings you into a relationship. Amen? Right. It brings you into a relationship. You're not just working for somebody. You are actually in a relationship. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Communion, that's the first definition that Strong's gives for communion. And then it says, literally, what it means is participation. So whenever we take partake of communion, partaking of the fruit of the vine and the, the breaking of the bread, you're, you're making yourself a participant in what Jesus has done. Amen. You're not, just, you're not just hearing a story about Jesus coming and dying on the cross, but you're making yourself a participant in what he has done. Right. You're involving yourself, actively involving yourself in what Jesus has fulfilled for you. And yes, you're, going, you're doing it to remember, but you're actually participating. Amen. You're, you're taking acts uh, of a Ask to involve yourself in that. Amen? Applying it to you. Amen? Yeah. Can I remind you, listen to me, uh, I said this the other night about foot washing, but, you know, baptism is an action that we do. It does have a spiritual concept connection to it. Right. Amen? Of washing away our sins. But there is a literal action to it. Foot washing has a literal action to it with a spiritual concept behind it. And communion is the same way. You become a participant. Amen. Not just somebody on the outside knowing that Jesus died for your sins, but you actually embrace it and you are a participant in what he has done. Amen. Praise God. Now, I don't, uh, I don't want to seem unseemly, but the next definition is social intercourse. That's what that word communion means. When people get married, uh, they uh, are in a relationship that that is so private between them. And they, in fact, the marriage, they can say marriage vows and stuff, but the marriage is consummated. And those two, through that action,
become one. Amen? Right. You understand? They become one. Amen? Praise God. The same thing with foot washing. When you become a participant and you take part in this, partnership in this, amen, there is something a lot deeper uh, involving you with Jesus. Amen? Praise God that others are not involved in necessarily. The church as a whole is involved in it. But this is a one-on-one -on -one thing with you. Amen? Praise God. And it is an intimate thing. you got, you got to understand, whenever we come to Jesus and we're born again of the water and spirit, the Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord, talking about that baptism of the Holy Ghost, is one spirit. You know that Jesus comes to you in, in the form of the Holy Ghost and he marries up to you. Amen? There's something very intimate about that relationship. In fact, Jesus likened uh, the church's relationship uh, to him. He's the bridegroom and the church is the bride, right? And he likens the church, uh, the marriage unit, unto Christ and the church. Amen? Praise God. That's why whenever Jesus comes again, uh, there's going to be a lot of people that's saying that they are of the Lord, and they're going to even be doing a whole lot of stuff. But he's going to tell them, I never knew you. you. You that work in equity. They never had that intimate relationship with him. Amen? Where he actually, his spirit was joined unto their spirit. When that happens, that's when that tongue-talking stuff starts taking place. Amen? When the baptism of the Holy Ghost comes in. God's moving on a lot of people all the time, but a lot of people don't have an intimate relationship with him. Amen? Praise God. And he wants that communion with us. Amen? Praise God. And it also means fellowship. Amen? That's another definition of this word communion. It means fellowship. And this is something that God has wanted with mankind, and it never could be like it was uh, in the garden. Amen? Until now. Until now. Right. Amen. The Lord used to come into the garden at the cool of the day. And he used to fellowship with Adam and Eve. Amen? He would fellowship. They would hear his voice. And he would fellowship with them. And he loved that. He, he, he had somebody to come and fellowship with, with that was holy. Amen. Adam was holy Amen. when God created him. He was sinless. Isn't that amazing? He was. And that fellowship continued until sin entered the scene. And now God no longer had the ability, holy God with a holy man anymore. Amen. Because of that element called sin. Amen. And God longed for that. He longed for it so much. And as Pastor John preached this morning, he came in the flesh and he gave his life, took the punishment for our sins, not for his, he didn't have any. He's holy, he's always been holy, he'll always be holy, but we weren't holy. We were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but because he wanted that back again, that fellowship with another holy being, we aren't holy in ourselves, but he came to take the punishment for our sins to pay the judgment for our sins and to have his name called upon us in water baptism in Jesus' name after we have repented, believed and repented. Amen. And at that point, he has brought us back into that relationship where he doesn't look upon us as sinners anymore. He does not look upon his people as sinners because he has made them holy. They weren't holy, but he did a work in our lives to bring us back to that place where we are holy in his sight. When he sees us now, he does not see sinners. Not unless we're willfully sinning. Amen? He does not see sinners. He sees righteousness. Not our righteousness, but he sees the righteousness given to us by the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. And you know what? He sees on the cross, he sees our sins being punished on the cross. Amen. That's what he sees in the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. That's all taken care of. Jesus died for us. 
We were going to go to hell, so Jesus went to hell for us. He went through all the role that was supposed to happen to us. Amen. And then he rose from the dead, proof that the grave couldn't hold him, that the sacrifice was sufficient. Amen. The debt's been paid. Amen. Everything that's supposed to happen to us has happened in the, in the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. So he imparts unto us his righteousness. In fact, he's called in the Old Testament, the Lord our righteousness. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Aren't you glad for the blood of Jesus? Amen? Yes. So the Lord has been able to restore us back to a place where he looks upon us and he sees the righteousness of Christ and he sees people that are holy. That's what he sees. Amen. Praise God. Because of the blood of Jesus. In Titus chapter 3, Brother Damon can pull that up. I just jotted it down this morning. Titus chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done. Does it say that? But according to his mercy, he saved us. How did he save us? By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That holy state that Adam was in was lost by sin. But it says here, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. He has restored us into that holy condition, filling us with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Filling us with the Holy Ghost. And it all happened because of the shed blood of Jesus. That's what that verse right there is saying. That has been made available to us because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. So we are uh, partakers. We're taking fellowship in the communion of what Jesus Christ has done for us. We're active participants in it. Amen. Praise God. We have a partnership in it. That's what we're doing with uh, partaking of the fruit of the vine and uh, the breaking of the bread in communion. It's very important for people that are Christians to partake of this. Amen. It does not get you into the kingdom of God. To get into the kingdom of God, we hear the gospel. We repent of our sins. Right? right. Amen. We get... We're buried with him in baptism in Jesus' name, right? And we are filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is, that is how we get into the Lord's church, by one spirit, which is the Holy Ghost. We're all baptized into one body, one church. Amen. Yeah. That's what puts Amen. you in the church. Praise God. Coming into this building that puts you into the church. Amen. You're born into water spirit. <clears throat> Praise God. And that's a one-time thing. The baptism in by water. There's many baptisms of the Spirit. We've had it here this morning. Amen. I felt it. Amen. And it was easier to speak in tongues than it was to speak in English this morning. Amen. As we was worshiping. Amen. Praise God. That's the, that's the times of refreshing. Amen. But there's one water baptism. Amen. In Jesus' name. That's a one-time thing. But there's many infillings of the Holy Ghost. But listen, even though there's just that one uh, baptism in Jesus' name to get us into the kingdom, there's things that Jesus had established, and that's what we're talking about here this morning, the communion, the thing that is ongoing in every Christian's life and should be in every Christian's life, remembering the shed blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Oh, somebody say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Praise God. Now, I read it to you, Luke twenty two sixteen. 16. Uh, Jesus had said, I will no more, I will not any more eat thereof, of the Passover. That's what he referred to in the verse 15, eating the Passover. Until, until it be fulfilled. Jesus was going to fulfill what the Passover was really about. Amen. Up to this time, they had offered bullocks and lambs. In fact, they were fixing to partake of the last one. Amen. That was going to uh, be the ex acceptable until once Jesus came, all that other stuff, 
The, the lambs all before could never take away sins, but this lamb that is fixing to be offered is going to actually do something more than all the rest of them could ever even come near to doing. And that was, he was going to provide a sacrifice that would actually take away our sins. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So let's look back at Exodus where the Passover was instituted. This thing that Jesus said he was fulfilling, Exodus chapter 12, verse 1. I'm going to kind of go quickly over this. But it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses. By the way, all the other plagues had been done in Egypt, and the people were still bonded in bondage. It wasn't until this right here that the Lord gave Moses the, the lamb, amen, uh, getting a lamb without spot or blemish, that the people actually are set free. Amen. And there's a reason why that is, is because the Lord wanted the message to us. Listen to it. I thank God for all the miracles He does. But I'm here to tell you, there's nothing that will truly set you free but the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. God may have done a lot of things for you. Before I ever came to the truth, the Lord did a lot of things for me. But you know what? It wasn't until the blood of the Lamb was applied to my life, amen, that I was actually set free. And praise God and found remission for my sins. But anyway, Exodus 12, 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, verse 3, Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. Verse 5, Your lamb shall be without blemish. Why should this lamb... Be without blemish. Because it was an example of what was coming. Amen. If it had a blemish, a blemish would represent a sin. Amen. Amen. And Jesus was without sin. So he required that the lambs that they offered be without blemish. A male of the first year, Jesus was Mary's firstborn child. Amen. Of the first year. You shall take it out of the sheep or from the goats. Verse 7, and they shall take the blood, they shall take the my paper with me. They shall take the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorpost of the house. Three places here, here, here. Praise God. Wherein they shall eat it. They're going to take the lamb without blemish, and they're going to they're going to uh, <coughs> kill the lamb, and they're going to Put his blood on the door, two side posts, and over the top. Amen. And they're going to take the lamb inside, and they're going to eat it. All of this has messages to it. Amen. Amen. And they shall, verse 8, And thou shalt eat the flesh, and that might roast with fire, and unleavened bread, <clears throat> with, uh, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it, eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire his head, with his legs and with the pertinence thereof, and you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. Amen. <clears throat> and thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. This is the first time it's, it's reported. God's instituting it, telling Moses they're going to observe this, and this is what Jesus was observing the very night that he took. Uh, they, they had the Passover, and it was the last one, he said, before he suffered. Amen? And, and, and until the kingdom come. Amen? The kingdom of God come. And he was going to fulfill it, wasn't he? Didn't know what he said. He was going to fulfill it. And so uh, that's what we're reading about here. He goes on to say, Thus shall you eat it with your lawns guard, your shoes on your feet, your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in the haste of the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Amen. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. So the Lord says, this blood's got to be on there, on the two side posts. And that lamb's got to be taken inside. Do not leave any of it till in the morning completely consume it, right? right? Amen. The blood had to be there. They couldn't just lay the lamb and lay it on the outside. You know, because they didn't want to get their house dirty or right. get stuff on their carpet or whatever. They had to take the blood and put it 
on their two side posts and over the top and carry the lamb in roasted with fire, yeah. completely consume it, leave none of it till the morning. Amen. That's his instruction. He said, because I'm going to pass through this night into Egypt and all the firstborn of man and beast, didn't matter if he was the king or the pauper, right. didn't matter if he was in a palace or in a dungeon, right. didn't matter. Everywhere the blood is not, death is coming to that place. Yeah. The death of the firstborn. Amen. So he goes on to say, and the blood, the blood that you put on the outside there, shall be to you for a token. Yeah. That blood being on that doorpost is a token. Amen. Praise God. Upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood. Amen. Amen. You know, they could have put... Uh, wrote out things, I'm a good neighbor, I've never cheated, I've never stole, I've never done, they could have wrote that all over their doorposts. But if that blood wasn't there, all those good works didn't matter, nothing. That's right. Right. Death was coming into that house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. He said, and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Amen. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast uh, to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And that's Israel still observes those things. Yeah. Amen. But those sacrifices they offer, even though they're, gonna, they're cranking it back up now, you know, they're trying to get prepared to do all this. Those sacrifices will never take away sin. Right. But they are a school teacher. They are a witness of things to come, which was Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Those things are examples and they're shadows. In fact, Jesus was partaking of the shadow when he was taking that last Passover, but he was fixing to fulfill it. Yeah. Amen. He was fixing to fulfill it. In verse 23 of that same chapter, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. The destroyer will be prevented from coming into that house when he sees the blood. Nothing else. Amen. He's got to see the blood. Amen. And any, where the blood was, was a protected place. Amen? Praise God. That blood of that lamb uh, was there as an example to let us know. And by the way, I've mentioned this several times before. The blood on the doorpost was applied on the two side posts and over the top. Amen? Is it any wonder that, that whenever Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, and they said, what shall we do? After he preached Christ to them, what shall we do? Peter said, repent. You're putting the blood on. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Praise God. That's how you apply the blood. Amen? Your faith will take you to applying the blood. If you don't apply the blood, it's because you do not believe. Amen. Amen. Right. When you know, you hear, you believe the word, you're going to get the blood applied. And and that death, and that's what we're just... Uh, this thing is talking about where he talks about he coming in and there's going to be death. He's going to smite the firstborn. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus' blood being applied to us. He's the real lamb. And when his blood is applied, death cannot go through and, and confiscate your soul. Amen? Right. Amen. Praise God. You've been freed. You've been protected. But you don't just get the blood applied. You take the lamb in and you completely devour the lamb. Yes. you got to not only be born again of the water spirit. Everything about Jesus, you need to do. You need to get it into your life. Amen. You right. don't leave nothing out. Completely consume the lamb. Right. And whenever they did that, the next day they were uh, a free people on the march right. to the promised land. Amen. And that's exactly where we find ourselves. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So baptism is applying the blood, and communion is an ongoing remembrance. And recognition of that sacrifice. Amen. Praise God. Acts 2.38 is how you get into the kingdom of God. 
Amen. Confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believing that God has raised him from the dead keeps you going. That's not the plan to get into the church. That was written to people already born again. That tells you how to stay saved. Because listen to me, this is not a once saved, always saved condition. Amen. You can turn from it. You can walk away from the Lord. You can. Amen. But you can't. If you'll just stay in there with him, he'll make sure you make heaven your home. Amen. Right. You will be saved. Praise yeah. God. Amen. But it's having that blood there. Yeah. Amen. It's having that blood there that keeps the destroyer out. Amen. That's why whenever I heard all of this, amen, about Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ and receive you of the Holy Ghost, I didn't hesitate. It wasn't, fortunately, it wasn't ice on top of the belt of the lake. <laughs> but had there been, I'd have broke the ice because this is so very important. You don't want to be without the blood of Jesus. Amen. amen. You don't want to be without the blood of Jesus. And that blood is applied to us through his name. Right. Oh, somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. We're talking about communion. So Jesus fulfilled uh, the Passover. Luke twenty two sixteen. For I say unto you, I will, I will not any more eat thereof of the Passover until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Right. Amen. That's why John the Baptist said in John 1, 29, that John said, he saw Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. Praise God. He is the Lamb that takes away the sin of the world. Amen. I left one of my pages. Praise God. I think you dropped one. I dropped another. that. I need I that because... I picked up one out of the floor. Amen. Praise God. Amen. He takes away the sin of the world. Isaiah said it like this about Jesus. Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. Surely he hath borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, that's all of us, amen, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, on this lamb, amen, this final lamb, this is the final lamb, but it's the real one, what all the other ones were about, amen. They were all just shadows and types, pictures of good things to come, but this lamb is the lamb that's going to put a stop to the sin problem in people's lives. Amen? The Lord has laid on him, on Jesus, the inequity of us all. Amen. Praise God. If you look back in the Passover, being the Passover the shadow, is the school teacher to bring us to God. Amen? Exodus chapter 12, verse number 48 says, concerning the Passover... <coughs> And if it's concerning that Passover, we can know assuredly if that's a shadow, then the true must have its own thing of likeness to it, right? Praise God. Who can partake of Passover? Amen. Praise God. You know, they didn't let just anybody partake of Passover back then. Not everybody could go in there and eat, what, be with Jesus on that last meal. Right. Amen. Amen. So there was a requirement that says, And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, Exodus 12, 48, and will keep the Passover to the Lord. So you got people on the outside wanting to partake of it, right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank God for anybody that wants to partake of it. Amen. Praise God. But we've got to make our preparations. We do. Right. Praise God. They had to do some things before they could partake of that Old Testament Passover. Amen. He said, if they're going to keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised. Circumcision is what they do to male boys, baby boys. Now they cut the flesh off. Amen? Praise God. Let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it. And he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. An uncircumcised person could not eat thereof, because this had... A symbol to it. Amen. 
Praise God. If uncircumcised people were, would be able to partake of it, it would send the wrong message to us today. Amen. That uncircumcision, circumcision was a flesh thing that was cut off. Jesus wanted us to have the message. Listen to me. If we're going to partake of his of the communion with him, amen, the flesh has got to be cut off. Amen. He's not talking about a baby boy being circumcised. He's talking about the carnal nature. Amen. If we're going to partake of Christ uh, in, in this uh, communion with him, the flesh <coughs> has got to be cut off. Amen. It's got to be cut off. Amen. Praise God. In Colossians 2, 10 through 13, he says, And you are complete in him. Paul's talking to the Colossians. He said, Which is the head of all principality and power. In whom also you, Christians, born again Christians, amen, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. Old Testament, it was circumcision by, made by hands. But it's not like that no more. We're in something brand new. Amen. We don't offer bullets and lamb because we've had the one and final lamb that will take away our sins, not just roll them ahead, taken care of. Amen. And we're not circumcised like they had to be circumcised in the Old Testament to be joined to the Lord. That's nothing today. Amen. But there is a circumcision that we have to be partakers of. Amen. If we partake of communion. Amen. In fact, we've got to do it if we're going to be baptized. <laughs> That's what it says. Repent and be converted that your sins may be brought out. We've got to die out to the flesh nature. Amen. We got to, The flesh has got to be cut off. Amen? Amen. Praise God. If you don't do that, you, you're hurting your own self, really. Amen. It says, in whom also, Christians, you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. You're buried with him in baptism. Wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God. That's the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The faith of the operation of God. That's God coming in. Because of the blood of Jesus being there. Amen? Praise God. Who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and, tr and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened or made you alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. That hindering thing. Like that hindered Adam and his descendants has been taken care of by the blood. Amen? Amen. Aren't you thankful for the blood? Amen. Hebrews 10, 14 through 18. For by one offering, this one lamb, the lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. For by one offering, <coughs> he hath perfected forever them who, that are sanctified. Whenever you uh, come to the Lord, you are washed. Through, through being born again, you're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified in the name of the Lord Jesus, that's in baptism, and by the Spirit of our God, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You're sanctified when that happens Amen. to you. Amen. You weren't sanctified, but He has made you holy. To be sanctified means, means to be holy. Amen. Amen. You get that by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Praise God. That's in 1 Corinthians 6 and 11. You can read that. But He says... For by one offering he's perfected forever them that are sanctified. Whereof, listen to this, the Holy Ghost also is a witness. In other words, through that one sacrifice, the Holy Ghost comes and you know that it's a witness, amen, that you've been reconciled to God. That's this tongue-talking Holy Ghost baptism we're talking about. It is a witness, amen. Praise God on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost was poured out for the first time, amen. The Bible says they began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave utter. People gathered around and said, what is this? And we hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. You know what was happening? The Holy Ghost was bearing witness with their spirit that they were the children of God. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost is a witness. Amen. Also, uh, it's a witness to us after... For after that he had said before, this is the covenant. Remember the new covenant Jesus spoke about? The New Testament. This is the blood of my New Testament. Amen. The Testament is a covenant. Praise God. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. He's, he's quoting an Old Testament scripture, but he's applying it to this Holy Ghost experience. Amen. In the blood of Jesus. This is the covenant I'll make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their heart and in their mind, no longer on tables of stone. Right. 
Amen. God's going to put his laws on their inward part. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And it's not uh, in, engraving with pen and ink and stuff. It says it's with the spirit of the living God. He puts that inside of us. Amen. I put my laws into their hearts, into their minds. When I write them and their sins, listen to this. Oh, you ought to be thankful for this. This has all happened because of Jesus shed blood. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there's no more offering for sin. In other words, Jesus doesn't have to come and die again because he took care of getting your sins out of your life one time at Calvary. Amen? Amen. That one offering, by one offering, he's perfected forever those to them that are sanctified. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. All of that is made available to us, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but by, according to his mercy, he saved us. And the method he used to save us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed abroad upon us through, amen, through Jesus Christ, amen. through that lamb and perfect sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So baptism, the born again experience, gets you in. It gets you into the kingdom. Your faith brings you to that, and you enter into. Remember what Jesus said, I am the door of the sheepfold. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Right. Remember him saying that? That enter in is an action word. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's just not standing outside and saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, but I don't want that blood on my doorpost. I don't want that lamb. I don't want to eat all that lamb. There's a lot of people, they want to be saved, but they don't want to eat the lamb. Right. You know? A lot of people, they want to be saved, but they don't want that on their doorpost. Amen. That's not what their ancestors believe. I'm here to tell you, it only matters what Jesus has established. Amen? Right. Right. Praise God. And the Bible says it's through his name, whosoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. That must be baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of sins. That's what it did. Amen. Praise God. Amen. There, through the born-again experience, we make entrance. We enter into that door of the sheepfold and are saved. Amen? Amen. Our faith takes us to that door, putting the blood on the doorpost. Amen. If they didn't believe, they wouldn't have put that blood on the doorpost. If they didn't believe, they wouldn't take that lamb in. They'd do something alternative. But you had to do it. There was one way for everybody. Yeah. Everybody had one way. There's not multiple avenues to salvation. What Jesus establishes the truth and the only way that there is. Amen. You know, it's like we're out there drowning, you know. We're out in the ocean. We're drowning, you know. And, and we see a, a lifeboat come up, and, and they they uh, they have a life uh, preserver in there and say, Okay, I'm going to throw this life preserver out to you. It's red. Amen. Praise God. And the person drowning said, Oh, I want a blue one. <laughs> I want a yellow one. You gotta get the one that's available to you, or you're gonna die. Amen. Right. Amen. And that's what we're presented with. The Lord has given us the gospel. Right. He tells us very clearly in His Word. Amen. How to gain access to enter in at the door of the sheepfold. He said, if we will enter in, we will be saved. Yeah. Amen. But He has a continual thing that we observe. To remind us and keep us in re remembering how we were saved. Yeah. Because you know what? Some people get in there and they get to living right. And it's all good to live right. And we're supposed to live holy, be holy for he's holy. But along the way, people get to thinking that they're better than other people. Yeah. That's one of the worst sins. Yeah. Amen? That's self-righteousness. Yeah. But you know what? We got a, a, a remedy for that. We got this communion thing that we do in remembrance of him. And we're reminded over and over and over. It's not because of our own goodness. It's because some blood was shed from us. And we need to have a spirit of humility about us and realize, like John preached earlier, the only way we're saved is by the blood of Jesus. If the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and ungodly appear? The Bible tells us that they're lost. Amen. And so were all of us. And we're going to be saved by the blood. That's right. We're going to be saved by the blood of Jesus. Amen. And so we need to remember. We need to remember. Peter stood up after the day of Pentecost in Acts 3, I think it is. And the blind man was lame at the, you know, he was sitting there lame. And him and John went up, Peter and John went up. 
And they looked on him, and he looked up, expecting to receive something of them. And he's, Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but I do have something. I have the name, amen, of the Lamb, right? I have a name that's above every name, amen? And there's blood attached to that name, amen? amen. Praise God, amen? In fact, he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, he put that name there. And Jesus said, whatever you ask in my name, focus into the right thing, amen? Focus into the sacrifice. No other means, no other way. Nothing else will get you there but the name. In fact, the Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given to men whereby they must be saved. That name has been given to us. So Peter took the name, said, In the name of Jesus, along with John, rise up and walk. And immediately his ankle bones received strength. And he walked and he leaped and he praised God. And he went in and the people gathered around. And they was wondering. And Peter said, Why are you looking at us? It's by our own power, our holiness. We made this man walk. It's the name of Jesus that raised him up. Amen? Amen. Peter didn't Amen. Correct, get correct. Uh, Peter didn't cause people to think that he was, it was his holiness that made him to raise this person from that. It wasn't his holiness. It was the sacrifice. Amen. It's the sacrifice. Amen. Is any sick among you? Call for the elders of church. Let them pray over them. Anointing them with oil. Amen? It's not the oil. Amen? The oil symbol of the Holy Ghost that's going to come when the name is laid there. Amen? Amen. It's the name. It's not the man's hand. It's the name. It's the sacrifice. Yes. Amen. 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 And we got to remember that. We got to remember that it's the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's the blood of Jesus. And he gave us this. Amen. Instead of offering them bullocks and lambs, he gave us something to observe. Amen. Praise God. The one sacrifice, the only sacrifice that remits our sins and the only way we have Righteousness with God. Amen. Amen. If we willfully live transgressions, after that we're trotting, according to Hebrews, on the blood of Christ. Right. And the God won't hold them guiltless. Amen. He's called us. We're saved by grace through faith, and that not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. But we are called unto good works. Amen. We're saved by His blood, but we're called to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Amen. Amen. But it's the blood. And as long as we strive to live soberly, righteously in God in this world, that blood will keep covering us. It'll keep covering us. Amen. If you've sinned, listen to me. You don't have to go get baptized in Jesus' name again. Just go. Confess your sins. And He's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. Amen. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yeah. Amen. Just pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And it's there. So if I... If y'all will come with the communion. Amen. Amen. You parents that have children, you be the judge of whether you want them to be involved in this. I think they need to understand what they're doing. Praise God. But this is a very sobering time. Amen. I hope it is with you. Amen. You are, amen, partaking, being a participant. Amen. You're fellowshipping. Amen. What has restored you? Amen. You are involving yourself intimately with the Lord in this. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. So if y'all want to come, John, you want to help everybody here to come up and just, we don't want everybody to bump into one another. Come up and Brother uh, Israel here, he has the communion. There's the fruit of the vine and there is the cracker there. That's, if you want to come, Brother Freddie, you want, anybody that's going to take them to kind of go in order and just, so we don't bump into each one, this side here can come. And I want you to hold off for just a minute because we're going to do this together. We're going to partake of communion together. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Leonard. I'm just thinking about.
about that. John's just thinking about water now. He's just thinking about this. Praise God. I hope you'll be prayerful. Get your mind and heart on the Lord. I'm sure you, I'm sure you probably already do. Praise God. If you, uh, you figure out to do it, you know. Praise God. If you have things in your life that you know you're living wrong, amen, and you're going to partake of this, I would encourage you right now to go to the Lord. He, you don't have to tell me nothing, but you and the Lord, you, and you, you get that right with him right now. Acknowledge it. It don't take a long time to get right with God. Unless you're reluctant to let go of it. But ask the Lord to forgive you. For whatever you feel condemned about. And make up in your mind right now. That you're not going that direction anymore. Amen. you got to cut off the flesh. Cut off the flesh. We're circumcised of the spirit. And cutting off the life of the flesh. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So we're going to do this together. And we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through 26. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Get your mind on the Lord, if you would. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, for Calvary. Lord, it's only by you, Lord, we confess before you that we are saved. Lord, <coughs> Jesus, if it wasn't for your blood, we'd all be lost, Lord. And now, Lord, as you've told us in your word, in remembrance of what you have done for us at Calvary, Lord, we partake of this communion. Praise God. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three 23 says, For I have received of the Lord, Paul speaking here, that which I, which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. <coughs> You'll take the wafer. Yeah. Praise yes, God. Break. And when he had given thanks, he break it. So you break it. You break it because Jesus was broken. It's symbolic of his, his body being broken. <coughs> <coughs> and he said and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me mm -hmm. amen you take of the bread thank you Lord thank you Jesus after the same manner also he took the cup the cup represented his blood the bread represented his broken body but the cup represented his blood, which represented, which was the life of the flesh. As God, he couldn't die because you can't kill him. You know, he's eternal. But he came as a man and bore the punishment of our sins. And that man had human blood in him. He was a human, 100% human being. And he was also 100% God. But he was a 100% human, the Son of God. Amen? And that body had blood in it. And he let his life be killed, shed. He shed his blood, the life of the flesh and the blood. And that's what we're remembering. That's what he gave. That's where he put all our sins. He paid for it with his life. So after the same manner also he took the cup when he had sucked, saying this cup is the New Testament, the New Covenant, right? In my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. You can take of the cup. Praise God. 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 
praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. His presence is here right now. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Can you give him thanks? Hallelujah. Can you give him thanks? Praise God. Thank you, Lord. God, for what you did for us on the cross. Thank you for Calvary. Lord, it is you that we trust in, Jesus. It is you where our hope lies. It is in what you've done for us. Without your blood being shed, Lord, we'd all be lost. None of us could be reconciled. None of us could be filled with the Holy Ghost without your shed blood. But I thank you for your sacrifice, through everything that you went through at Calvary, Lord. God, for taking that out of the way that caused us to be separated from you. And God, are you not in us to you through the sacrifice of Jesus, through the shed blood of Jesus, and all the horrible things that you went through, Lord. All the things, Lord, you went through. And Lord, you said on the cross it was finished. You took care of whatever needed to be done there. Oh, Lord, and I thank you, God Almighty, Lord, I just pray you'll help us to walk with you and keep our garments that you robed us with without spot, wrinkle, or any such blemish. You know, the flesh blemishes the garment. But, oh, God, may your blood cover us. Oh, Lord, continually, all our days, and help us walk worthy, Lord, of what we've been called into. Help us live for you, Jesus. Help these, your people, all of them, Jesus. God, help us walk acceptably with you. And Lord God, honor you with our lives. Oh, Lord, and live, Lord God, as would be pleasing unto you, Jesus. My God, after what you've done for us, after you gave your life for us, we should surely give our lives to you. And Lord God, I pray that it will be so in every heart here today. Praise God. And thank you for once again letting us partake of this fellowship with you, Lord, through communion. In the name of Jesus. And thank you so much for your presence. Thank you for being here. May your people be blessed now, Lord, because, Lord, of the recognition and remembrance of what you have done. May they be blessed. May your anointing be upon them. May your love fill their homes. Jesus, in your name, oh God, your name is upon them, Lord. And Lord, it is your blood that we trust in. And I pray that they will find your blessings and your great graces upon their lives and the strength they need, Lord, and to continue all the days of their lives and in their families' lives, Lord. Oh God. Pray all of this in Jesus' name. Praise God. Verse 26 says, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Yeah. Amen. There's not a set time necessarily. You know, we observe the resurrection of Christ, and we normally do communion at that time. But it doesn't necessarily give you a set time. The Passover was one time a year. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of... At the, when we talk about the resurrection of Christ, we do the communion. But he said as oft as you do it. Right. He didn't stipulate a number of times he was called to do it. I think it's good for us to remember. Amen. And give him thanks. Amen. His presence is here. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm not going to keep you.